Hey guys, let's strum among the stars a little bit. So. Hey guys, it's Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Today I will show you how you can create those moving stars or comets or star trails or name it however you want that you can see in Star Trek, Star Wars or that type of movies so that you can create your kind of designs if you're up to it. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin. Right guys, like everything in Photoshop, this effect can be created in several different ways. And today I will show you just one of them that includes creating a custom brush. So let's do that first. Let's create a new document and I will use maybe 500 by 2000. And this is more than enough. And now I need to create that uh, moving star or comet with a tail or that kind of uh, brush. So again, that can be created in several different ways too. So I will show you two methods. First is just use a regular brush, black color and harder one and just make a dot right here. But first let's uncheck some brush properties, right? Like just a regular dot. And then you can use a smudge tool and just make it bigger like the brush or even bigger and move it down. And as you can see, you can create this, this shape that is really nice for our effect. All right, that's one way how you can create it. Another way, it's a little bit more elegant because you, you have more control and it's not bad to know another way how you can do that. So let's undo this a few times. And now let's create a new layer. Go choose a brush and press F5 to go to brush properties. And now we need to check only the shape dynamics. And under the size jitter, we want to set control to fade. And as you can see, we have those numbers here. Now it's set to 25. Those numbers represent the length of that fade effect that you will see in a second. Now if I press and hold shift and draw just straight down, you will see that my brush became smaller and smaller and smaller until it's fade into a zero pixel size. So that's the fade effect. And we want to set this brush to be softer, not so hard, maybe around 50 or 45%. And now this is much better effect. So those numbers, if I set to 50, I will have twice as long, uh, long tail of uh, this star, right? And with those numbers, you can control how long it will be. So this is really nice and elegant way to create this effect. For me, 25 is more than enough. So I will do this and just create this. And then I will uncheck shape dynamics, go to transfer and set the opacity jitter to fade. And I will use the same 25 uh, like I did in the size jitter control. Right, and I will choose really soft brush, harder to zero. And now I will again press and hold shift. I'm pressing and holding shift while I'm drawing with the brush because I want to have a straight line. You don't need to do that if you want to have a little bit curvy line. But for this example, I want to have straight line. So press and hold shift and just draw down below. And this is really nice. We have our star comet with the tail and that's good. So I'll press control command T and just make everything a little bit wider like this and press OK. And now we need to convert this into a brush. So to do that, just go to edit and define brush preset and name this. I will name it Comet. OK, right now let's go to our empty document and let's make this brush smaller and create a new empty layer. Now, if I choose uh, if I choose to draw something like this, you will have really nice effect. I can wrote my name and this is interesting. But we will not do that, definitely. We will populate this empty space with those comments. So for that, we need to again to change some brush properties. Let's undo this a few times. I like to have my background black, so I will invert it with Control Command I and just go here and choose a white color instead of black. And this is this is great. So now I will press F5 on the keyboard, go to Shape Dynamics and go to Size Jitter and set around 30% or so. It doesn't need to be exactly. I will just uh, make some variance in uh, brush size, okay? And I want to go to scattering and to scatter this a lot, all the way to 1000. You will see some crazy effects, some crazy 
star dress. But again, I want to go to brush tip shapes and increase the spacing a little bit so that I will have something like this. Now we'll make a brush smaller. Let's close this. Okay, and even smaller, just really, really small like that. And I will populate this space with this small brush effect like this. Maybe a middle, a little bit more here. And now I will stretch this. I will make those star trails a little bit longer. So how to do that? Just press Control Command T and press and hold Alt or Option key to stretch both upper and lower parts in the same time. And I will stretch this approximately like that. Let me see. Well, this is nice. So when I'm satisfied with this, I'll press OK and that's it. Now I'll create a new layer, make a brush a little bit bigger and do exactly the same. Populate this with a little bit bigger trails and then again stretch it, but just a little bit this time like that. And again, create a new layer, make even bigger brush and just a few of them. And you can play with this, guys, however you want. This is up to you. You can create more dense field of stars or less dense, or you can make bigger or smaller stars, whatever you want. It's up to your imagination. All right. And now when I'm satisfied with this, maybe I want them a little bit smaller. Maybe they're too big. Okay. I will go and group everything together. Select all, press control, command G and group this. If I want to make this even dense, I can duplicate this group by pressing control, command J and just move this like so, and maybe I want to hide smallest one just to have the middle and these big ones, or I want just the smallest one, depends on how uh, dense effect do you want to achieve. All right, for this situation, I will just hide all, maybe I will need it later, I don't know, but this is the effect that uh, we are trying to achieve today. This is how you can create those uh, moving star effect. And now to this image to have a little more sense, I will introduce those X-Wing uh, fighter that I draw just a silhouette and this uh, Millennium Falcon. So I will paste this one here and let's go back to this one, copy it and paste it too. So let's move this one here, press and hold Alt Option key just to duplicate that. And let's go to this guy make it bigger by pressing Control command t and just make this a little bit bigger like that and just move those guys wherever you think they're nice to fit like here and now i want to maybe make some engine trails etc so i will create a new layer underneath those layers to create a new layer underneath the current layer just press Control or command key and create a new layer that's it and i will use a brush regular brush this time just soft round brush and go and softly create something like this. Maybe make a bigger brush. And that's it. Now I will double click on this, go to outer glow and set the blue color, any color that we want for this engine, maybe red, but I want the blue color, right? Press OK, play with those settings like that. And when I'm satisfied with the result, I will just press Okay, and that's it. You can do exactly the same with the stars here, with those comets or whatever they want. They are. You can go to group and double click on the first layer and just say, I want outer glow. Let's zoom this and choose the size of that glow, maybe like seven or six, five pixels. Press OK, then to second one, outer glow, maybe size a little bit bigger like this and go to third one to the biggest ones and let me see maybe even bigger size we can change the saturation less saturate maybe colors to all of those effects like this and basically we are we are done with the effect All right, guys, now let's unzoom this and this already looks much, much more interesting. So let's close this group, go to 
uh, this engine uh, engine effect. All right, and let's create a new layer engine for engine for X wings, engine for X wings. Okay, and I will create the same thing. Use a brush. Just do something like like this, maybe, and press Control Command T and make this a little bit wider. Why not? Okay, and now I want to feather this. To feather this, I will create a new layer mask. Go to gradient filter and choose black and white colors. As you can see, just we need to swap the colors to have black as a foreground, white as a background, and just draw it here, something like this to feather this effect. That's nice. And now I can double tap on that and introduce the outer glow to it, and we are done. I can now press and hold Ultra Option key, move it right here to duplicate that, and then select both of them, press Ultra Option, move it, and set to another. Now this is too big, I will scale it down and put it right here. Okay, and this is how the image looks right now. Of course, we can do even more. Let's go back to our black background and introduce a new solid color layer that will be something like bluish, maybe this type of blue. Press OK, invert the layer mask into black, press Control Command I, and now I will use, you can use a regular soft brush or you can use any other brush. I will use a cloud brush. You have a tutorial how to create a cloud brush right here. So check that out. I will use a cloud brush, maybe this one, and just with maybe 20% opacity or so, just add some lights right here. And why I'm using cloud brush? Because I want some imperfection, uh, imperfections in the shape. I don't want just a regular circular brush for this. Okay, and this is nice. Something like, like that. I'm using 10% opacity now just to paint, paint this. And this is much better. One more thing that you can do here to make this even more interesting is to go to your group where the stars are. Let's name this group stars. Okay, without the stars it's again interesting too because of that uh, cloud brush. Right with the stars and you can collapse, merge that group into one layer. To do that you just need to press Control command E. Right, and now it's a new layer and you can you can blur this. Go to filter, blur and motion blur. Set the angle to 90 degrees or minus 90, it's completely the same. And now choose your blur. This is too much. I just want slightly to, to blur this, maybe around, maybe something 11, 10. That's okay for this image, maybe 12, 13. Okay, and this is much better because this is before and after, before and after. Now you have a little bit better impression that those ships are moving really really fast and again you can play with a lot of things here you can merge everything together with shift command option e or shift control alt -E on a pc and then go to filter and go to camera row just to make some color corrections here i want to add some contrast maybe a clarity a little bit dehaze it just a touch actually haze it just a touch, add some grain here because I like grain in these types of images, like a film grain, and maybe some amount of vignetting with a feather. And I can add some bluish tint into shadows, maybe some greenish tint into those highlights, something like, like this. Maybe to sharpen it a little bit and to open shadows, touch and close the blacks. Like that, why not? And let me show you, before and after, before and after, and here you can even use the font and maybe type a Star Wars, why not? Just use a font. I have a Star Jedi font that you can download from the link that is down there in the description. And I will type Star Wars, okay, and make it a little bit bigger. And as you can see, guys, This is one way how you can create this effect. Maybe add a shadow, just change the color of that shadow, maybe to 
something like that. And our image is ready. You can place this wherever you want. You can maybe write something else here. I don't know. Do whatever you want. Be creative. Play, play with this. All right, guys, this was the effect from a bird's perspective. So looking from above now, let me show you how you can create really easily practically the same effect from a first person view. To do that, you just need to create a new layer and I will use 1000 by 1000 pixels. The easiest way is to create a square format image for this method. Just press OK and turn it into black by con press Control Command I just to invert the colors. And now let's use a regular brush. Just choose a regular hard brush, but not so hard, maybe 70 percent or something like that just normal brush and press f5 go to brush properties goes to shape dynamics and you choose the size jitter something around 70 percent you don't need to go all the way up but you can it's allowed of course and then go to scattering all the way up and go to brush tip shape and use the spacing something like i don't know let's try this is not bad maybe a little bit more and use a really small brush. Now what you need to do is to populate the screen with those dots, like you having the stars here. Of course, there is another way how you can create those stars. You can use a noise and then with the levels you can control the amount of that noise, but this is just another way how you can do that, All right? And now what you need to do is to go to filter and blur and go to radial blur and choose from spin to zoom. And just play with this zoom amount, right? Just you can play however you want. I will set to 80 just for a test. And as you can see, this is the effect of those stars. If this is not visible so much, you can duplicate this and put in the screen blending mode and duplicate a few more times to have this visible. So this is the effect that you will have if you are driving the spaceship and going in really fast into warp speed. Right, guys, and that was just one of few methods how you can create this First person view traveling through a star fields really fast using a verb drive, verb speed. And that was it for today's episode. I really hope that you like it and that you learn something new out of it. And now it's up to you to be creative and make your own version of this space adventure. You can even make some shooting scene and so on and so on. Be creative to do whatever you want. If you make something really fun and interesting, please tag me on Instagram and I will make sure to check it out. If you have any questions regarding to this episode, please leave them in the comments below. I will be more than glad to answer them. And if you want to help me to support this channel to make it even bigger and better, you can do that by visiting my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description. And of course, you will get some things in return. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes. And see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.